Hey everybody and welcome to another physics video. We are going to move on to another chapter to talk about two physics concepts called work and energy. Let's start by talking about work. The idea behind a force is that it is a push or pull. However, sometimes the force is applied and the object doesn't move. If a force is applied and the object does move, this is called work. In physics, work is equal to the constant force exerted on an object in the direction of motion times the object displacement. The equation for work is represented by force times the displacement times cosine of the angle. To clarify on the angle, the angle represents the angle between the force and the displacement vector. Using a work equation, we can get a number of possibilities in terms of the outcome. Uh, we can get positive work, we can get negative work, and we can get zero work. Uh, let's, let's start with an example of positive work. If we have an object and the force is pointing to the right, and the displacement is also pointing to the right, this is considered positive work because the force and displacement are pointing in the same direction. Also, something to note is if they're also pointing in the same direction, the angle between the force and displacement is zero degrees. In the next free body diagram, the displacement is pointing to the right and the force is pointing to the left. In this case, displacement and force are pointing in the opposite direction of one another. Another way to express this is the angle between the displacement and the force vector is 180 degrees. If this is the case, this would constitute as negative work, as the force does not work with displacement. The last free body diagram here has a displacement pointing to the right and has a force vector pointing downward. This would be considered zero work. The general idea for zero work is this, if the force and displacement are perpendicular to one another, that would constitute a zero work. The reason for that conceptually is the force does not contribute or take away to the displacement of the object's uh, displacement. Math mathematically, y is a zero if you place zero degrees, I'm sorry, not zero degrees, if you place 90 degrees in cosine of theta, cosine of 90 degrees will give you zero. Let's try out an example. Chloe applies a 30.0 newton force to a box 35.0 degrees to the horizontal. The box travels 2.0 meters. I should specify along the floor. What is the work exerted by Chloe? Let's start by drawing a free body diagram. The force makes an angle in reference to the horizontal 35 degrees. The displacement vector is pointing to the right here at 2.0 meters. And then since we have everything here, we have the force, we have the displacement, and we have the angle, we can go ahead and use the work equation. Plugging everything in, we have work equals to 30.0 newtons times 2.0 meters times cosine of 35 degrees. By multiplying all three values together, we get an answer of 49.14 joules. The abbreviation for joules will be J, and that is going to be our unit for work. Next, we move on to energy. In physics, energy is needed to do work. Also, energy can sometimes be defined as the ability of an object to produce a change in itself or the world around it. Let's talk about our first step in energy. Here you see three examples listed. A fast moving tennis ball, a truck traveling at 20 miles per hour, 
a meteor landing on Earth. These examples have energy because of their motion. This leads to the first type of energy that we'll be talking about, kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is energy resulting from an object's motion. The equation for kinetic energy is Ke equals 1 half mv squared. The kinetic energy depends on the mass of the object, but more so it depends on the velocity of the object. Let's move on to our first example. A 0.198 kilogram softball travels at 22.35 meters per second. What is the kinetic energy? Let's identify what we know. The mass is 0.198 kilograms. The velocity is 22.35 meters per second. And what we can do here with these numbers is plug in the values into our, into our kinetic energy equation. We're going to have Ke equals 1 half times 0.198 kilograms times 22.35 meters per second raised to the second power. Multiplying those values all together, we get an answer of 49.5 joules. You'll also notice that kinetic energy and work both have the same units of joules. The reason for that is in physics, you need energy to do any sort of work. That concludes our brief lesson on work and kinetic energy. And thanks for watching.